So this is going to be a slightly different video than what I had originally planned. Uh, this is going to be me uh, discussing just in conversational style uh, how I have uh, contracted and then recovered um, or am recovering from the COVID-19 virus. Uh, stay tuned and thanks for watching. If you don't already know, I'm Dr. Ben. I'm a practicing uh, full-time emergency physician in the Midwest of the United States. I uh, have a passion for healthcare and health information. Um, I've created this channel to um, empower and inform um, people out there about health conditions and uh, my experiences as a physician. Let me uh, preface what I'm about to say by saying that this is going to be a story of my experience with COVID-19 um, and the symptoms and my progression of symptoms and how I've treated it uh, amongst myself and things I've been thinking about. It is not the um, experience, of, experience of others. Um, everyone who gets this virus seems to um, have symptoms in a slightly different um, way, a progression of symptoms and severity of symptoms. I've been very blessed in my symptoms to call that they're fairly minor um, and you'll you'll hear about that. So again, let me preface this by saying this is my experience and it's not always the experience of others and uh, not uh, necessarily the experience of you if you are going to contract this virus in the future. For me, for contracting the virus, um, I can almost pinpoint the shift I had when I got the virus. Um, we're currently in the second surge here in the Midwest of the United States. Um, I took care of a shift with six, six very sick patients with COVID-19, several of them sick enough to be admitted to the hospital. Um, I wore all my protective care equipment, um, my N95, my, uh, my gown, my um, protective eyewear, gloves obviously, wash in, wash out. Um, and despite that, you know, I still contracted the virus. I had thought at the time that my risk was minimized enough to where, you know, I, I wouldn't get it. You know, clearly time and time again, it's been shown that even with the best equipment and protective measures, people can still get the virus. And I, I think unfortunately that's what happened to me. Five days after the shift, I started feeling like I was coming down with a little bit of kind of an early cold. I uh, just woke up feeling chilled, uh, just muscle aches, a little bit more than what I would expect for being an active, busy guy. Um, I went on a walk with my wife outdoors um, and just came home and just felt really wiped out, like extreme fatigue. And that evening I began to have sore throat, congestion, I had this piercing headache, um, and my muscle aches got worse. I didn't have a fever at that point, um, but it was enough to where as a you know practicing emergency physician, I can't have those symptoms and not be concerned about COVID, particularly since I'm gonna be taking care of very sick patients um, who have a lot of comorbidities and who are at a very high risk for, for serious damage or, or even death, unfortunately, if, if you know I were to give it to them. So it was enough to where I, I felt compelled and mandated to get a test. And so I signed up for a test and luckily the hospital I work with has a next day testing program for um, healthcare workers. So I signed up for that and, and got the nasal swab. I'm sure you've heard about it. Uh, just kind of to briefly go over that. They take a thin swab. It's probably, I, I would guess, about the diameter of a pencil clip. Um, and it goes pretty pretty deep into the, no, the what we'd say the nasal pharynx or the nose, um, which you would be surprised how, <laughs> um, how uh, deep that, that actually goes back and connects to your mouth. Um, so the person who did it was fantastic, but even then it, it's an uncomfortable thing. If you've had it, you know what I'm talking about and um, it's enough to where you would definitely want to not come down with the virus enough. It's just to not be tested with this. Um, but got the test, went well, went home and uh, that evening then got a call from the employee health physician saying, hey, your test was positive. I'm sorry, how are you doing? And then from there, um, here starts a 10 day mandatory quarantine um, for me and obviously missed shifts because of it. And, and just, just another point here, as a physician and you know someone who's worked most of my entire life, um, it's, there's a, sh I don't know if shame is the right word. There's a, there's a component of um, feeling weak if you call off of work. Um, for any sort of illness, particularly something where, you know, scratchy throat, headache, uh, 
um, muscle aches, you know, that's fairly minor. Um, you can work with that normally. Um, and as a, as a point of pride, you know, all through medical school and my emergency training years, we worked sick. Um, but the worst thing that I could do right now is to work with this illness and expose other people to it. And I would argue that that goes beyond just me working in healthcare and to any other field. So I highly encourage you in this current COVID-19 pandemic, as we sit here in uh, 2019 into 2020, if you're getting those symptoms and there's a concern that you have COVID, you should not be around other people and you should get tested. So after I got the positive test result, I began to notice a few things that are atypical um, with a typical cold virus. Um, first off and most dramatic was that next day I completely lost my sense of taste and smell. There are so few things that I can taste, very sweet things. Um, uh, things that are extremely bitter, I can I can taste a little bit of that, but my sense of smell is completely gone. My wife had uh, made a delicious apple pie the other day prior to me getting you know a positive test result. Um, I remember eating it that day when I started to feel ill and it being delicious. Um, we warmed it up; it felt good on my throat. But then the next day, after I started to lose my sense of taste and smell, I could not taste any of it. I could taste the texture, or I could. I could appreciate the texture, but couldn't taste the apple, couldn't taste the the bread or the crust. Me and my wife went to the cupboard, and we began to pull out spices and have me smell on them. Couldn't smell any of them, even the strongest garlic concentrate. Couldn't smell any of it. And this was not just because I was congested. Normally, when I have a cold, you know, you don't smell as well, you're so congested, you just can't move air back there. It's not because of that. I've been doing lots of nasal rinses, having my nose washed out. It, even with good airflow, there's just no smell. It's it's rather disconcerting, honestly. Over the next several days during this mandatory quarantine, my symptoms wax and waned, but I'm very blessed to say they've all been upper respiratory symptoms. Um, the distinction here is upper respiratory means above the lungs and above the main airways. Um, so my, my symptoms have been congestion, headache, sore throat, um, muscle aches, uh, subjective, or, or I feel like I'm having a fever. Um, although I, I have not documented a fever in myself, I've been using Tylenol and ibuprofen, which has certainly helped. Um, but I haven't had any lower respiratory symptoms, meaning I haven't had chest tightness, shortness of breath, feeling like I can't breathe or take a deep breath. Um, uh, diffuse, you know, increasing cough. Uh, my cough has been mostly due to drainage from the back of my nose and it's been very sporadic. I've had some nausea, but I haven't had vomiting. I um, uh, have still been able to eat through it, although that has kind of waxed and waned too in terms of appetite. For me, my experience of COVID so far has been, it feels like a really bad common cold, like the common colds, like beefed up steroided brother um, who just wants to, you know, beat up your nasal passage and uh, make you not be able to smell or taste anything. Um, but other than that, I've been sleeping uh, anywhere from 12 to 14 hours a night and still take naps throughout the day. Um, just f uh, for that extreme fatigue, which I guess is another dif differentiator for me between other illnesses. Um, I'm, I've just been so wiped out from this. It's felt like I've been hit by a truck and I'm a pretty healthy uh, you know, early 30s year old guy. In terms of treatment, what has helped for me, and again, this is this is my uh, perspective, and what I would counsel most patients who contract this virus is symptomatic control. Um, we don't have a treatment right now for this viral infection. There are some medications, some antiviral treatments that are coming down the pipeline, which the FDA is starting to approve. Um, those things are reserved for hospitalized, severely ill patients though. It's not something we can give out to the community. So when I talk about symptomatic care, what I'm doing is what I you know, tell patients to do. Tylenol, Motrin, um, which is ibuprofen uh, throughout the day for muscle aches. It also just makes you feel better. It gets you a little bit more appetite. Um, decreases your headache. Um, for congestion, I'm a huge fan of uh, combinations of guaifenesine and dextromethmorphan. Honestly, studies are still out on how effective these over-the-counter cough and cold medicines are. I think they make me feel better, so I, I tend to use them. 
you can use a combination, something like DayQuil, NyQuil, Robitussin, DM, um, all of that pending uh, you not being on medications that have side effects with those or um, uh, you having a comorbidity like you know liver disease or kidney failure where you wouldn't be able to take that and that's an individualized thing you'll have to talk to your doctor about. The other thing that's been a godsend for me is nasal rinses. I'm a huge fan of neti rinses. Um, I'm not endorsed by them, I'm not paid by them, but I, it sounds gross if you've ever heard of people talk about it. It's uh, where you fill this with distilled water and you add a salt pack, which they package in with this, and then you squirt it up one nostril and it flows out of the other nostril, so it forms this circuit around your nose and it helps you clear the mucus out cannot recommend it enough if you have congestion. It just helps get everything out, helps your sinuses start draining, get that crud out of there. Um, that's been one of the key things, particularly when I you know, need to sleep and I just feel so congested and feel like your head's a balloon. That's been a go-to for me, for me. Now, in terms of you know, dealing with, with the um, emotional and mental strain of, of a COVID diagnosis, that's a very real thing you need to consider. Um, for me, a lot of it was uh, placed on thoughts of my wife, um, who obviously I live with. I don't have children right now, um, but being around someone who could potentially get infected with this, and again, the virus affects everyone differently. While me and my wife are healthy, there are still reports of people who get extremely sick and even pass away who are healthy people. So it's, it's not a disease to be trifled with. This is not a common cold. Um, so. Being around my wife in the household, we're wearing masks, both of us, around each other um, when we do have to be in the same room, which we try to minimize. Um, I've been sleeping in, a, in the guest bedroom. Uh, she's been sleeping in our bedroom. We have different bathrooms. Um, try not to eat uh, you know, next to each other like we typically do. What's concerned me also is that from that shift I worked where I think I got COVID up until when I started showing symptoms, that was a full five days. I had a five day asymptomatic period, um, which is kind of standard. The CDC says it's about five days for, um, uh, for an incubation period, meaning from the time you contract the virus until it's replicated enough to, for you to show symptoms. And that's another thing that's unique to COVID-19 is um, this prolonged um, carrier state, asymptomatic carrier state in which you are infectious during the last several days of that state. Prior to that, you know, we weren't wearing masks around each other um, and it's very possible I could have given her the virus. Now, thankfully, she just had the test today and I've had the virus now for, I don't, I think nine days today. Um, and she, she was negative. So there is very much hope of not spreading it to close loved ones in the household as long as you try to minimize risk, mass being the biggest one. So let me end by uh, telling you that I, you know, I'm doing well and I, I feel very fortunate to be doing as well as I am and recovering out of this illness. But I wanna preface this by saying again that for a lot of people, this virus causes severe lower respiratory symptoms, meaning they can't breathe, they require oxygen. Not only is that an extremely scary thing to have happen to you, um, have the thought of potentially being put on a ventilator for a prolonged period, but that is extremely tolling on the healthcare system. This again is not the common cold, this is a much more serious virus, which for me has affected me more like the common cold with some added symptoms, but for other people pull, puts them in complete respiratory failure, where we're putting a breathing tube down their throat and breathing for them for a prolonged period of time, during which they're in a coma. They can't talk to their family, um, they can minimally respond to their family, and for some people, you know, very sadly, that's the last they get to see of their loved one. So I implore you to social distance, wear a mask when in public and avoid situations and events in which you could be exposed to or spread the virus. Let me also say that this has been a very brief video describing my experience with the virus. Um, I'm planning on doing a full COVID-19 series describing everything I briefly touched over in broader detail. Um, how you get it, the signs and symptoms of you getting it, how long you're infectious for, can you infect your loved ones, your pets, 
Um, does that spread the virus? Things that you should be avoiding, how to clean your household, how to treat yourself, what are the warning signs to look out for? So if I haven't already made those videos, look out. And if I have, I'm gonna link them down below or on the screen somewhere. So take a look and stay tuned for that. As always, stay happy, healthy, informed, and empowered.